All right, welcome back to Code Conversations, and I'm back with... And Taylor Mellon. This is so exciting. We are going to learn how to build our very first tag helper. Yeah, I'm excited. I am too, because I've never built a tag helper before. Oh, wow, yeah. But I've fun. seen so much this week that I do want to build one now. Nice. Okay. Yeah, they're super easy to make. Um, kind of, I don't know, it's, it's fun to get into the world of MVC with tag helpers, because then you can do so much with them. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so I'm excited. Um, your information is up on the screen right now, and are we going to jump right into the demo? Let's do that. So going to go over here to Visual Studio 2017. And um, again, if you need to get yourself onto what I'm using today as you're watching this, check down in the show notes. All the information should be there. Um, there's a few bits I'm using to kind of make tag helpers light up. OK. Um, a quick refresher, tag helpers are these nice little purple guys that show up here in your pages, and they allow you to run C Sharp on HTML elements. OK. So in the last video, kind of went over uh, how, like what does MVC offer? How do you use these tag helpers? Today we're going to write our own. Okay. So tag helpers at their core are just a C sharp class. So you can right click and add this. We actually have a sample for this already available. So if I do new item here, um, there is a razor tag helper under the web section here. Oh wow! I've never noticed that. Yes, and the tag helper we're going to be creating today is a markdown tag helper. So for those who are new, this is a README. So if you have Come any in. GitHub. Totally, yeah. So here's actually GitHub's cheat sheet for this. And this is GitHub uses Markdown, Stack Overflow uses Markdown. Yeah. It's kind of one of those universal languages that is getting more and more popular as a way to kind of make more descriptive text, but purely just writing, um, writing other text. Exactly. <laughs> text for writing text. Text okay. for writing text, yeah. So um, just to go over like some of the small things of what you can do, like if you surround your text with stars, well, it comes out as bold text. If you you surround yourself with square brackets like this, you get a link that looks like GitHub pages. Yep. Um, so lots you can do with Markdown. Now, how great would it be if we could enable Markdown in our page today? Pretty sweet. So we're going to try and do that. And so I have booted this application. And we'll add a Markdown tag helper real quickly here. Then we'll look at what this application is. This is just the default template. OK. Um, nothing really going on here. But I think it'd be great if we could simplify some of the code that is going on in this template. So right. we have a lot of links down here. Um, and when you look at one of these links, we can actually open this up real quickly. Go to index. These links are a little verbose here. So you don't always need all this information. So I guess we'll look at this Bower one, for example, here. Imagine this Bower was simply with these square brackets. And this was the context of our link. That would be beautiful. Oh, yeah. Like if we could do that, everything would just work and be nice. Um, and of course, you could use all the different various markdown flavors that were available on that cheat sheet that GitHub, okay. GitHub offered. So I refreshed this page, and you can see we're not doing anything today. No. So let's fill out our markdown tag helper, and let's look at what that template built for us. All right. Um, are we going to be writing massive lines of code? No. This is actually super small and simple, <laughs> no. which is really cool. So by default, this is what a tag helper is. Okay. So we have an HTML target element. This tells you what tag do you want to run your C Sharp on. Okay. Um, so in our case, let's just say markdown. Now, if I didn't have this tag, if I was like this, the convention would be just everything before the tag helper would be the tag name. So you okay. can also use the convention based if you want to. We'll leave this here for what, what the heck. Why not? And then we have this wonderful process method. OK. So when we're trying to render that HTML element, this is kind of like the what do I do yeah. method. By default, you're not going to do anything. But yeah. um, we give you some of these little parameters here to work with to mutate what the HTML element looks like when it finally outputs. All right, cool. So example, output. We have our attributes. We have our content, a whole bunch of different various content methods. We have our tag name. Our tag mode, self-closing, not self-closing, okay. so forth. All right. Um, a lot of stuff here. So if people wanted to find out more about the things you just showed us, would that be in the docs, or would that it be? It would be, oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, so we all this stuff is pretty thoroughly documented on how you can kind of maneuver your way around the tag helper landscape and what okay. you can mutate, what you can't. OK. Um, we also have a lot of videos out there, too. A lot of our, a lot of our customers have done great at just kind of contributing docs and tutorials, and oh, okay. uh, been really good. Yeah, I see your face on most of the videos. So yes, I, <laughs> I try. <laughs> I, I try. Um, OK, so Markdown. So by adding this, we actually will enable a tag called Markdown. All but right. we first need to add Tag Helper it. So I'm going to add Tag Helper, every Tag Helper in my creating your own Tag Helpers assembly. 
Next, by having this, I should be able to go over here and write a markdown tag. Oh, we see it right there. there. It pops up in our IntelliSense. We get the nice little purple text. I can move our text into here. And then I'll move this li out. Li, all right. So we have our markdown tag. It's not doing anything yeah. yet, but we have now we have the option to actually update our tag helper to mutate what this does. Okay. Okay. So I've written a little snippet here to save a little bit of time. So let's just use this guy. So, so what's happening over <coughs> here? So as you can see now, we're no longer using the process method. We're using a process async method. All right. Um, you can use either one that's added by this nice tag helper class that we have. Um, this is for you doing asynchronous behavior. Um, so to kind of step by this line by line, first off, our tag name is markdown. Okay. Well, we don't want to render the markdown tag on our output because it doesn't do anything. Yeah. So let's take out the tag name. Okay. Next, what we really want in this is we want this content. We want to be able to take this, maybe run some regular expressions on it, yeah. and transform it into the markdown that we expect, or sorry, the HTML that we expect. Expected. So, oh, wrong guy here. So if I go here, I now have my child content. So this is the way how to invoke basically the contents of your tag and yeah. get the output of it. Okay. Now, the one tricky thing here is with markdown, if I invoke the child as my tag, it is basically all of this, including the white space. Oh, okay. So in markdown, white space is significant. It so is. you'll end up getting not what you expect by doing this. You'll get bullet points, I believe. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we need to do a little bit of maneuvering, or massaging rather, of this content. So we'll take the content, we'll break it into lines, and then we'll just trim each of the lines, and okay. then pull it back together. So essentially, by the end, all we have is this guy right here. Just what we want. All right. And nothing more. And you're doing this with regular expression? So I could. I could write them all if I wanted to. <laughs> That's a little bit more work than I yes, wanted to do. Just... So we're going to actually go over to NuGet and download this common mark converter. They've been, uh, <laughs> they're a package I've actually used for a lot of different things. Yeah. And they've done a great job of making this available for everyone and making it super easy to take re like regular text and just transform it into markdown that, say, GitHub appreciates oh. or Stack Overflow ap appreciates. So if I search common mark here, I see commonmark.net, and I can just install it. It's really quick, quite a small package here. Click Accept. And then I'll have my package over here. So I can go back to my markdown tag helper, add the using for it. And I'm now taking my stringified content. Yep converting it, getting our transformed. And the very last step after all that's been done is we need to now replace any content that is in the middle. So close this guy out. All this content needs to be replaced with its new HTML for it. OK. So this is our Markdown Tag Helper. Let's see if it works. That was it. That was it. So yeah, pretty quick. <laughs> now, well, if this all works <laughs> as planned, it should. We Fingers should see crossed. a text. We should see this guy kind of. Transform back. Oh, there you got it. And there we go. Yeah. But nah, we, we should do a little more just to make sure we're not just going like we're not just making things up. So let's uh, let's make this bold and italic. Do managing. Let's see. And there we go. There it is. Get bold and italic. That is really cool. Yeah. So a few lines and we are just able to enable this markdown support in our page. And it just works. And I am wowed because I was expecting lines, literally lines of code. Oh, yeah. And I was thinking of like, oh, I can't remember my regular expression. Yeah. And then you brought in this package yeah. and everything was simple. Oh, it's, it's super it's nice. Super nice. What are some of the fun things that people have done with their own tag? Oh, hours? I have seen people make templates, make grids. Um, people love this markdown one. They have taken this and tried to productionize it, make it usable everywhere. I've seen people take random different languages, so take TypeScript, yeah. pull in script tags, and then actually translate the TypeScript files on the fly. Oh, wow. I, I think the, the opportunities are endless here. Oh, this is gosh. really cool. Um, so this was one way how to get content into our tag helper. Yeah. Um, don't have a ton of time to go over all the various ways. There's a lot out there, though. Um, you can take in things from an attribute by adding properties if we want to. So I could add in, like, say, a string property foo. Yeah. Just really quick example here. And if I build, I can then get this attribute IntelliSense for it. So I get foo. Oh, whoa. OK. So you can take in information a lot of different ways in order to control what your tag helper does. And this is just the tip. Wow. So OK, if people want to go start learning how to build their own tag helpers, 
we can go back to the docs. I'm presuming that there's some information oh, there. Yes, there's lots. Um, what other guidance would you give them if people wanted to like give back? Like, how can people get more involved in what's going on? In totally. Tag helpers? Yeah. So I feel like our MVC tag helpers that we have, um, these guys are actually over at GitHub, ASP.NET, MVC, Source, MVC tag helpers. These are basically everything tag helpers can do and more. Oh wow. Um, there's a lot here. So. We were looking at our form tag helper in our last talk, and we can see all the val like basically all of our form tag helper stuff in our HTML target elements, just like we were just <laughs> using. Yeah. You can see exactly how we make make all that magic work. Oh wow! So we can actually take some of your magic and make it our own magic totally. and all that stuff. Oh, yes. okay. I'm excited about tag helpers, awesome. and I'm probably going to use a Markdown one right <laughs> after this recording. Beautiful. Um, thank you so much for coming. Thank we you appreciate for me. your time. And if you do anything really cool with tag helpers, please tweet Taylor and I, and you know, give us a little bit of applause <laughs> or thumbs up. We're really excited about what you're doing. And Taylor, thank you so much for coming. Oh, thank you for having me. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you.